In the last video, we covered the basic setup, how to get PaperZD installed, how to set up your assets, and a basic overview of how to do some of your animation nodes. Uh, what I want to do now is focus on individual nodes, individual methodologies for animating different behaviors for characters. So we're going to go into this new animation blueprint. We already have our animation sequences set up, our animation source, all of that stuff from the previous video, so I'm not going to recover that. But I am going to go from point of nothing in this new animation blueprint. So we're going to start from scratch, all the steps necessary to have all of the behaviors for idle, walking, running, and some options on how to tailor that to customize it somewhat. And then in future videos, we'll cover other animation behaviors. So the first thing you want to do is on initialization, we want to get owning actor, cast to our character's blueprint, and we want to promote this to a variable. Let's call this owner so that we can make callbacks to the various assets associated with our character and know what's going on with our character. So that's all we need to do there. And we're going to go to our animation graph and we're going to create our state machine. And we'll just call it state machine since there's just one that doesn't need to be creative. And we go into our state machine and we drag out and we create our animation state, which as I covered in the previous video, we could do this in three separate nodes, one for idle, one for walk, one for run, but that just makes your, your state machine overly complex when you have to link back to those talking and typing at the same time makes you type wrong things. It's much more simplified, much more efficient to just have your, your basic idle walk run all in one node. So normally what you would do here is you just say, okay, this is my idle animation. So just play idle and there you go. The node would be set up. And then the case of you have two animations you're choosing between, you would just say select by Boolean. And so we want to grab a reference to our character and we want to get the velocity, split this out. And this is a 2D game. So all we care about is the X velocity. And if it equals zero, we know we're standing still. So that will play the idle animation. But if it doesn't equal zero, it means we're moving. So we would play in this case, uh, run animation. The sprite doesn't have a walking animation. But let's say that you didn't want to go just between idle and running or idle and walking, just two animations. You want to be able to run or sprint or whatnot. But then what we do is we drag out from here, we do another by Boolean. And in this one, we're going to check our speed again. But this time we're going to say, is our speed greater than, say, let's say our normal walking speed is 200. Okay, well in that case, we have a running animation. We also want to have a walking animation. But this sprite, as I said, doesn't have a walking animation. So what can we do with this? Well, what we can do is we can take a running animation and we can expose the play rate and we can say, all right, well, I'll put the running animation in as my walking animation have with a play rate of one. And then I'll have a play rate of two for my running animation. So it'll just play the animation twice as fast. Now, I get, right off the bat, I can see one mistake that I've made here. This, oh, well, one, connect that up, dummy. This isn't going to work. The logic is sound except for one problem. 
because we're checking our velocity at being greater than 200, well, that only works if we're moving in the right-hand direction. If we're moving to the left, then the value of x is going to be a negative, and this isn't going to work. So we need to actually check for the absolute value of x. And now that will work. So if we're standing still, we get idle. If we're moving, we play our run animation. And if we're moving faster, I'm going to interrupt my past self here and interject a, a better way of going about what I was demonstrating. This was brought to my attention in another video where we do the climbing animation. And rather than using two select by bools in a chain and using two separate animation calls, we're going to use a single animation call and we're going to change its play rate using a select float node. So the same logic, but instead of doing the comparison here and then following that down and doing the comparison again in another by bool, we're doing the comparison, the second comparison here for the speed that the character is traveling to select a different input. That way the animation remains smooth rather than it changing animations, which resets it back to frame one. It can be kind of jarring and jittery. This will continue to play the animation smoothly, keeping its current frame and simply change the rate at which it's playing. Okay, so the, the same calculation, we're looking at the X, which is your left and right movement. We're looking at the absolute value of it, comparing it against our normal walk speed to see if it's, if it's more or less than that and then setting the play rate to either one or two, depending on the circumstance, and feeding that into the play rate. Okay, so a slight change there. I will now hand you back over to my past self who can explain this section in here. But uh, something else you can do, since we're playing around with play rates, is let's open up the play rate. Let's expose this for our idle animation. Let's say we have uh, a stamina stat, okay? So let's grab the stamina for our character. And when your stamina runs out, you can't run anymore, but you want something visual to indicate that that is the case. So how about we make our character pant harder when they're tired to show that uh, their stamina is depleted. So what we can do is uh, change the play rate of our idle animation, which is this them standing there breathing, and change that based on how much stamina we have. So we need to know how much is the max stamina is. And then what we can do is we can subtract from our max stamina our current stamina. And then we want to turn that into a percentage. So we divide that result by our max stamina. And this is going to get us a number between 0 and 1. But what we want is our animation to play normally when we're at full stamina, and then we want it to play faster when we are winded. So what we do is just add 1, plug that in there, Okay, and now we will compile that. We'll give it a try. So walking, idle, staying there breathing, and then we're running. Plays the animation twice as fast, and we run out of breath, panting, until our stamina recovers. So that'll give you some idea of some of the things you can do 
for controlling your animations and animation states. And you notice that none of this involved me doing any code in my character's blueprint. This handled it all itself. Other than like pulling some, some information from the character blueprint, there was nothing I had to put in there. All I had in the, in the character blueprint is just my controls for walking and running. And everything is handled in here. Okay, so that covers idle walking and running. In future, we'll cover the jumping, climbing, sliding, crouching, things like that. Hopefully you guys found this interesting and helpful. Have a good one.